all my life I've always wanted to measure. I'm not interested in opinions. Hi, it's Will at Practical Performance Cart, and we're here with Dave Walker at Emerald M3D, and we're going to talk about cylinder heads. Okay. And what have you got here? What's this head from? Um, this is off a Mini, supercharged. That's the first uh, generation first, BMW. First generation BMW R50, R52, R53. Right. Uh, the 52 was convertible, otherwise the heads are all the same. But this is a, a BMW engine, yeah. is it? Uh, it was a, a collaboration between BMW and Chrysler. It was on the Cooper S from... I think 2001 up to 2006. Right, and what um, capacity is the engine then? Uh, 1.6. Right, so it's quite uh, a small engine. Yeah, Deaton, four, I think it's 45, supercharger. Yeah. But I mean, the head's the head. Mm -hmm. um, it was originally, I believe, designed just as an aspirated uh, head. Oh, so without the supercharger? Without the supercharger, and then right. when they decided to do the Cooper S, I think they decided to go supercharger. Yeah, that makes um, sense, yeah. Well, in so terms, does that compromise the design of the head as far as it um, forced induction? Yeah, right? I think it does. Um, this is not one of the best heads I've ever seen. Right. Um, yeah. But today, if we're just talking about porting and polishing and gas yep. flow, gas various flow, yeah. terms, um, there is no gas. Uh, we're, we're, we're changing the shape. The polishing is just a sales thing. If it's not shiny, you can't sell it. So the polishing doesn't gain you any power? No, it doesn't gain you any power. The thing that matters is the shape. Right. So um, I've taken some valves out, because this one's particularly bad on the exhaust. There's quite a lump in there, isn't it? There's, there's a big step, yeah. And, and is it, that just left from the casting? That's just left from the machining. The casting is there, and it's machined down to that depth. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and then they just stop? And then it just stops, so then you just, so you've got a big step. Yeah. And it looks horrendous. But I can tell you now, because I've already done the work, um, you can smooth all that out, and I've got, um, I've got a port here. If you look in there, yeah. where I've taken all the stamp and everything out, yeah. uh, and I gain almost nothing. Really? Because yeah. that, you'd think, looking at the standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at that, restriction. massive restriction. And that looks time. lovely. Yeah, but the game was That looks much faster, real. though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not. And, and it will be, it will look much faster if I polish it. It would, yeah. yeah. It would. Uh, and it's easier to sell. Yeah, but it makes no difference. It right. was, I would say it was a waste of time because it doesn't well, take know long. Was, no, we well, wouldn't know. That's why we have the flow bench. So if I can just explain how um, a flow bench works, um, when you first get a flow bench, the first thing you discover is that a big hole flows more air than a small hole. Really? Yeah, yeah, amazing. Isn't how it? expensive are flow benches? Because I'm. Um, I reckon I could have guessed that. Well, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, the trick is that to get the shape that gives you the best flow for the given valve size. Mm. And that depends on how high you're lifting the valve. Right. If you look at uh, this one here, this uh, exhaust valve, um, it's way overlifted on most of the cams that you get for these engines because the flow stops at about 250,000. So why do they bother opening it further? Um, it's to do with the uh, design of the cam and giving the spring an easier life. Because really? if you fire that open to 250 and stop dead, mm. it wants to carry on. Oh, right, just from yeah. inertia. It, right? Yeah, from inertia, and it will right. just float off the end of the cam. Right. So you, you can only accelerate them so fast. The other problem you can get, the, these are an exceptionally good in that respect because they've got a roller follower okay. but if you've got a conventional follower where the cam lobe is rubbing against the follower if it accelerates too fast it squeezes all the oil out between the cam and the follower and they wear out right and that was the classic problem with the pin yeah, so I thought you might mention that, yeah. dreadful things yeah so you don't need big lift uh, on the cams especially on this head so if we go over to the flow bench right let's do that then so right. now, now we've moved over to the flow bench yeah um, Talk us through this if you could. Right, basically this is just like a giant vacuum cleaner and we've simulated the bore size here. So we've got a tube under there that represents a cylinder bore. Oh, so that's a similar size to the bore that would be on this It is. If, if I lift that up, you can see the adapter in there oh, yeah. with the bore size. Yeah. And I've got those two studs so that the head lines up exactly square with the bore. That's really important because uh, some engines like TR4s um, if you move the head across to one side so it's not central, you actually get more flow. Through really? The head. Yeah. And the guy who discovered that, uh, Peter Burgess, good, good man, he discovered it because he put the head on and he'd got a flow game and he hadn't done anything. Right. Uh, but it's because it wasn't lined up right. 
So, right. I mean, now everyone knows that tweet, but he was the original um, guy who did it. I always like to give credit where credit is due. Absolutely, yeah. So, this is a very old-fashioned flow bench. Um, it's about 30 years old. Right. Same as me. Um, yeah, I was going to yeah, say. Yeah. Looking well. And um, so, this is all done on manometers. Nowadays, if you get a flow bench, if you're going to have electronic sensors in there, you don't need any of this stuff. Right. But I use it so little now. It's only like a hobby thing now. I don't do heads for a living anymore. No. So um, I'm, I'm, I know it. I'm quite happy with it. And the way it works is, obviously, the harder you uh, suck or the greater the depression for the technically minded, the more airflow you, you flow. So you need a constant, and the constant on this one is always 10 inches of um, depression. Right. So you have to have somewhere holding the valves open, and I made this with two dial gauges, so that I can open the valves uh, the same amount and then take a flow reading. Right. Now, this manometer is very short. Some machines, that would be going all the way down the floor in, yeah, right. in the old days, in the 50s. Um, but uh, Superflow come up with this idea that that represents 0 to 100% of each hole. Oh, right. So you so just bung the holes You just bung the holes up. So oh, right. at low, if I just... Up, at low flow, you leave all the bungs in. Like that. And it's just sucking through that small hole. It's only coming, it's only measuring the percentage of that. So you set that at, say, I always, I'm, I'm thou on, on lift for mm -hmm. some reason. So I set it at 50 thousandths of an inch lift, start the thing up, adjust the depression uh, until I've got 10 inches, take a reading, and then I've got a little computer program that Carl did for me uh, to convert it. But you can just look on the graph and that will just give you a, a good idea. Of what's going on and it's measured in CFM, cubic it? yeah cubic feet per minute right yeah. if you want some sort of numbers right. go back to the good old days of the four pintos a standard head would flow about eight five CFM on the inlet right and the big race heads that I used to do would come out about 120 wow that's um, quite a difference yeah exhaust flow similar sort of gains right but on the on the, um, the pintos the exhaust flow was never a problem I did lots of uh, work to improve the exhaust flow never found any more power right as a general guide, Ford seem to work on about 70% of the inlet flow you'll find on the exhaust on nearly all their heads that I used to do. Um, and I've ported them up to 80%, which is what Superflow say you need, and never saw them again. Right. So if you can get 70%, you're, you're doing okay. The thing is with the exhaust, when that valve opens to, to let the exhaust gas out, mm. the pistons only sometimes not even reach top bottom dead centre so you've got tremendous combustion pressure still in there yeah and um, I've seen uh, footage uh, through a quartz window mm. of the gases and as soon as that valve opens it's gone right you're not relying on a piston coming up that's, that's interesting because right, that's how I sort of envisaged it was the piston was pushing the exhaust gas out that's not the case no that's what we all, we all call it what, suck squeeze bang blow yeah, yeah but yeah as soon as that opens the pressure difference it's gone right and then you um, it's another story we're getting the camshafts on a lot over that we'll do that another time we can do that another time so there's your flow bench so what you do is 50 get a reading 100 150 and you will eventually you'll, you'll have a, a curve and so the whole point of this is that you measure it when it's standard, yep. and then when you make a modification, you put it back on and see whether you've gained anything, and yep. if so, how much. Yeah, is it any better? Years ago, people used to just sort of do it by eye. You know, you could look at it and go, oh, I don't think the air is going to turn that corner very well. I'll grind a bit out here and there. Yeah. And the first guy that I know of who actually tried to measure something was, I don't know if you remember him, Bill Bidenstein? Yes, I do, yeah, yeah the Vauxhall guy, yeah. Smashing bloke. Yeah. Um, team dealer Vauxhall, wasn't it? That's dealer right, team was. Vauxhall. But he started out uh, using water. He, he built a Did thing he? there and he had a plug and he timed with his stopwatch. That and makes sense, water yeah. To go through. It doesn't, it doesn't, because water doesn't compress. I it suppose it does, like, maybe it doesn't yeah. behave in the same no. way as it. But it was an attempt to measure things. Yeah. And like all my life, I've always wanted to measure. I'm not interested in opinions. You know, if it's better or it's worse, I want to know by how, how much, much, and I want something quantifiable. Right, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, something Not, you can oh, build on. It feels faster. Something repeatable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It feels faster than cutting it. Yeah, that's basically what you do. And I, I got this manometer, which um, I made some little um, pitot tube probes, so I can put that inside there and probe the port and see whereabouts the airflow is. If there's more at the top, the bottom, the left, or the right, I can probe that round. 
Um, so that gives you an idea of where you gives you an idea of where, where you, you want inside there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and a tip if you if you ever get a float winch when you first start, a good tip is um, if you think you need to cut more away, say from the bottom of the pool, mm. if you get something in there like a little bit of plasticine and just yep. build up a restrictor, um, if the flow doesn't drop, making it smaller hasn't made it worse. So making it bigger is probably not going to make it any better. Yeah. But if you do get a drop, then it's worse having a go. Sometimes you have to sacrifice a head. I was going to say, probably more than one. Oh, well, you get four goes at it on a four cylinder. So True, yeah. once you've destroyed one, it doesn't matter anymore, <laughs> yeah, does it? You know, you just like you know, get get carried away. Um, the, the, the actual physical side of the porting and grinding is, that's another story altogether. I was just telling Ben, um, I think it was you who told me when you did your apprenticeship, one of the tasks that you were given was to take a piece of steel and file it into an absolute yeah five eight black bar and it had to be half inch and what was the tolerance five five thousandths of an inch five thousandths of an yeah. inch yeah and it makes you pretty good with hand tools yeah though. but if you went under they'd throw it in the bin and make you start again oh they wouldn't let just make you oh no no smaller no no, no, no. 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 have to be right okay yeah. well thanks very much okay um just trying to think what else i can tell you about flow benches it's a as i say it's a tool um, you, if you make that hole massive, it's going to flow more air, but it doesn't necessarily mean to say um, it's going to go any better. But the, 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 one of the main things I use it for is to find out how high you need to lift before the flow stops. Right. Because there's absolutely no point in lifting the valve further unless you're doing it, as I said before, for a mechanical reason, mm. you know, to protect the valve gear. Okay, great. Flow benches are great. You can measure things. All right, thanks. Well, maybe we could get you to fire it up. Yeah, I can make some noise. Yeah, yeah you have to plug it in. Yeah. This, um, I'm working on that one. <laughs> there you go. I think you want to switch it on as well, Dave. Hey, you want to switch it on as well? Is it not on? I can't see. Yep. Um, right. I'll just go stupidly full lift. <laughs> That's why that valve is there, to catch idiots like me, <laughs> um, who are trying to get a massive flow through that little diddy diddy yeah. hole. So, yeah, four ball. Adjust the feet and take a reading. 78%. So then you just go here to the number of bones, 78%, take a reading. I won't tell you what it is because that's what I've been playing with and I'm keeping that quiet at the moment. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. All will be re revealed at some point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do, um, once I've finished the head development, I'll put it on the engine uh, with no other change uh, yeah. and see what it's worth. And this is a single cam head? Isn't yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and hydraulic followers and rockers. It's, it's, I, I like it. Ooh. Okay, well, uh, we'll come back when you're ready to put it on the engine. Then. Yeah. yeah, don't hold your breath because it's a side project. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Dave. Um, hopefully, by the time you get this head finished and back on the engine, we'll be able to come back and yeah, yeah, definitely. see what kind of power game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's cut through the nonsense and uh, and measure things. Okay. We'll yeah, see you then. We'll give you the power output, the torque, and we'll have the flow figures to back it up. Great. Okay. Look forward to it. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.